What's up, everybody? Fat Boy Dan here. I am here right here with my woman. We're out here on the Wabash River getting ready to show you what we like to call the old-fashioned way of collecting bait. Back in the days, you know, sure, people used a little, maybe a cane pole and whatnot to catch some bait. As well, back then, people used to use the same. You want to check your local laws and your regulations to what size of the net you can use. Here in Indiana, it used to be 10-foot seine net. They did up it to a 12-foot. Unfortunately, I really haven't seen a 12-foot seine net. Now, they make a 10-foot and a 20-foot. Maybe they do make a 12-foot somewhere. But what I got right now is I got a 10-foot seine net that I got from Academy Sports and Outdoors. They got these seine nets. I think they're right under 12 bucks. Very good. Sure, you can use a cast net. I can use a cast net. But the thing is, cast net will throw your arm out a lot of times. But then there's times that... I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I can't always throw a cast net. That's one thing I need to watch more YouTube videos and do it. Now I did have a great time. One time I cast a net out here. My very first throw, choom, got me some shad. I thought it was shad, but when you further look at it more, it was actually Asian carp. Cut them babies up, little baby ones. Put them on my bank poles out here. That was one of my best nights on bank poles. Well, probably second best night because we did have a good night one time. But what we're gonna do, man, enjoy this as we're gonna show you guys the traditional way old school way of seining up. What we're gonna do, walk the seine net out. I'm gonna kind of walk it out into a little bit deeper. She's gonna stay more towards the bank. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of circle it around. So we're gonna cut the fish off. Then I'm gonna circle back in, scoop them babies up, cause right here where we're at, we're seeing a lot of minnows and right here, we're okay, talking about teeny, tiny, like micro. micro, micro little minnows. Now them's gonna go through our net. That's why also, you know, laws and regulations have your nets have to be a, such a, uh, a diameter on the hole that is for the smaller fish can get through. That way they can survive and they will be the next year's bait and it will keep the river plenished. Now we're not going to get a lot of bait. Maybe we will get a lot of bait. No matter what, I'm going to use the bait. Whatever bait I collect today, got my little Magellan cooler back over here. Bait tank, I like to call it. Live well cooler, whatever I want to use it for. We're going to use that. Got the aerator on it. We're going to roll it up. And uh, fired up, I should say. Maybe push the button, something, get it rolling. But join us, man, as we collect the old school bait. Man. Don't y'all be looking at my boobies either. Be looking at my boobies. Uh, hey, y'all, y'all enjoy this. Now I ain't gonna be able to see any y'all comments as well right now because I got the camera facing us with the good camera way. The other side, if I would have had it where I can read the comments, the quality would have been down a little bit. I'm hoping this quality is up a little bit. I was gonna do some short videos, upload them. I'd rather bring y'all live. This is what the real river life is about. It's about enjoying it. Definitely about enjoying it. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. All right. Y'all join us. All right. Yeah, we, we got them. Now, saying that, what, basically what it does, you know what, let me go ahead and do this. Pop my net up. We're gonna make it easy as well. Pop that baby off there. That's what I was saying about season. Boom, just like that. The lid removes on the cooler. Got my little slide right there with some night crawlers if you want to catch it. Then we'll go ahead and put that there, put the worms there, flip that over. That air stone is so cool. That is cool. My water's gonna be in there, the rods right here, and that's what we can catch bait with. <laughs> Swing it around. Oh, 
house where you're at? Yeah, they're in there. They're in there. Now we got a little corn stalk or something as well. And you want to run it all the way to the bank. Ooh, them trees are going to kind of mess something up. Just like that. Boom. A little bit. A little bit. Watch your rods behind you. Kind of show you guys what we're working with. Right off the bat, you will collect sticks. Boom. Go ahead and start pitching them into the ooh, pitching them into the, the cooler. So here's what we're getting. Ooh. This is the hardest part of saying is picking them up out of the net. Yep, now you can roll it up and then dump them in. Right there. Little baby minnows. Right there. There's my pinky finger. You know, a little bit, little bit smaller than my pinky finger, but these are the perfect size to actually pit on. And what we'll do with these, put them on a hook underneath the bobber, fish the little creek, little edges right here, a creek up here, wherever you choose to, pit them underneath the little bobber. Now, you're gonna catch your moon eyes. You're gonna catch, maybe in your water, skipjack, uh, river herring, some of the bigger fish that you may enjoy to use as bait. The rest of them are kind of tiny. Rest of them tiny? Yeah, toss them back in, and the little baby ones, toss them back in. Now, little ones like this as well, look. Little ones like that. Now, look at that. That's like a like a fingernail right there. Now, see, I know them are not Asian carp. Now, I can use these as alive because I know the difference between this. They look nothing like that. That little dude's probably going to die. Hey, I need to get that other stuff, too. Oh, yeah, the G-Juice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I totally missed him. All right. Look at this. Guess what they did? Huh. As soon as you put them in there, they went straight to the air stone. Huh. I don't have the air stone on yet, but they went straight to it. Huh. Yep. All right, huh. now we're going to kick this on. Oh, definitely. That big air stone, look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool, that's cool. All right, let's get some more. All right, so now we'll try this a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do, we worked it kind of shallow. We got a little bit of them in there. Now I'm actually going to walk it out. I'm going to go deeper. And then we're going to try to pull some bigger ones in because usually the way it goes, your minnows are going to be closer to the bank because they know they can't survive out there in the gang world of the river. You know, they know the big dogs are going to be out there lurking to get them. They're like, oh, what's up? I'm from the river side. They're going to say, oh, I'm from, the, I'm from the west side. So the west side is going to be the deeper side, you know, and then the uh, east side is going to be a little bit shallower. So that's where they're going to come across. So them big boys are going to come from the west side. And then they're going to come over here and attack the little smaller ones. Well, they don't know. This big boy from the west tier, Palia, is already going to get them. Let's do this. Yeah, I kind of... Oh, you're all right. Yeah. Let me show you guys a little bit about what we got going on. I'm going to show them the net, too. Oh, okay. So like I was saying, here's the styrofoam. So when you do get a little bit deeper water, it will keep it afloat. Usually they come with lead weights. New technology, new age of days are coming with ceramic weights. Should be a little bit gooder on the ceramic weights. Keeps them a little bit more down. Now they will be a little bit more bigger weights compared to your lead weights. Let's say you got a one ounce lead, a one ounce ceramic weight. Your ceramic's going to be a little bit bigger because of the density of the weight differences that goes in between lead and ceramic. Ceramic is not the same weight per ounce. Lead's heavier, but is lead safer for the river? Not really. Lead's not really safe for anybody of the water, but it's something that we have to deal with in this time and age. Now, new technology is coming out before we know it. You never know what they might have. They might have some kind of electronic sinker where it's automatically going to be gravity fed. I don't know. Sounds good, don't it? All right, let's try this. Yeah. Walk back down close to the boat. See the mud duck back over there. See how that's 
got a little bulge in it, but we're keeping our thing pointed down, so we're putting a bulge in it. But it's allowing them to go to the back where the things can stay paving. Yes, it does. We'll come back on the camera in just a minute as we scoop this up. Oh, there's some bigger ones going in. Up. Oh, yeah, walk that over there. Yeah. yeah That's what we're wanting right there. Once again, got a handful of these right there. Handful, let's see. Ooh. Good ones, look at that. Look at that, got a bunch of them, about a dozen. Got a little dozen of them in that. Fast, easy way to get some bait. Yeah, I'll toss them back. There we go. One more, toss them in the water. A little too small. I see some of the smaller ones that I'm not after. I'll throw back in the water to kind of keep, like I said, the water replenished. Do this one more time, show you guys what this is all about. I'd like to get some bigger ones. Sometimes you can even get bluegills and crappie out of here. All right, see how we went deeper and it came out even bigger. Asian carp, but we're getting, I said, little minnows like that, work pretty good, work pretty good, boom, that's all over that, yeah, yep, turn that little guy over, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right there it is, that is the old-fashioned way of getting bait, that's how I love to enjoy getting bait, Kind of keeps me cool on the hot summer days. Right now, I think the weather's around 76, 78. Water temperature's pushing 76. In the shallows, we are pushing 77. Maybe 78 as the sun's sitting above us. Gonna be a good day. We're gonna catch some bait. Now we're gonna go up to another spot. Try to catch some more bait. Put some of the minnows. You grabbing that G-juice? We got some G-juice we're gonna be putting in here. Uh, you know, uh, they do make additives that you can, you know, Put into your live well, into your bait tank to kind of keep the fish more revived. It's like it recoats their slime. As well as, you know, there's a few different kinds. But what I'm hearing a lot about right now that's tournament tested, a lot of pros stand behind is the G-Juice. 
They do have the Shad Keeper as well. I haven't used the Shad Keeper and I haven't used the G Juice. Neither one I've used, but they've both been good. Uh, what I mean by that is I've seen good reviews. Oh, well, actually, I see a lot of good reviews. The Shad Keeper has been around for years and years. Now the G-Juice came out where they're using it for the fish, and it kind of revives them. Kind of puts a coating back onto them. Sure, you can add some additives like some of the salt, but a certain kind of salt will do a little bit of um, a coating on them. I know y'all like, what? Salt? Yep. I, I learned that at the Mississippi River Monsters. When the DNR, Tennessee DNR was there, was telling us about adding salt to live wells because a, a, a certain amount to the water ratio, if you got it mixed right, gives a perfect coating, but it doesn't over salt them where they're gonna you know die i'm like what come on now but you know tennessee dnr they know what they're doing they just passed regulations down there as well for the catfish well about last year g juice we're gonna be adding to it let's see what this is all about let's see so right here's the, some of the g juice any y'all ever tried that check it out this is actually for fresh water and salt water applications and you know what it actually does not harden in the bottle like you know some of your other formulas like the shadow keeper i was talking about uh, the direction for using this, they say a half ounce treats 30 gallons of water. This is 8 ounces. So just a half ounce will treat 30 gallons of water. We're not going to have that in that. We've got a 30 quart. Probably got about 3 gallons in it right now. Uh, let's see, the, the G-Juice formulation was developed from 20 years of research. Spent in the bait fish and fish hauling and sport fishing industries. I never knew about it. Alright, now this replaces the slime coating. Helps... Stop bleeding, which we know a lot of shad, once you put them in there, they bleed like crazy. Add essential um, electric lights. You know, like myself, out here I can get dehydrated, so we drink Gatorade to keep you electric lights. You know, remove the uh, ammonia, uh, the chlorine, and some of the other chemicals and heavy metals that are known to be in some of the waters. Uh, helps the pH balance, you know, kind of like... You know the fish your ph balance can get off a little bit you can start smelling same with the, the fish they start you know getting stressed out or whatnot their ph balance is off it's that time of the month for the fish um detoxifies uh nitros i think that's what it's called uh you know sometimes you know uh river runoff stuff like that can put chemicals in there it's going to help reduce that as well and this most of all is non-topic to non-toxic to humans pets and no aqua life of course it's got to be non-toxic because otherwise that treats 480 gallons wow keep fish alive g juice endorsed by bass elite pro schwindel gerald schwindel all right that's pretty cool boom right there so they use it to keep some of their bass alive you know they got some big rigs out there keeping them bass alive so really this little bottle and i actually got this from academy sports and outdoors as well now let me see what this is all about so what we got, you got a fancy little package that comes in, you can reuse, you can put it back in there. I want to hold that for the moment. You got two caps. If you want to pour something big, pour it in there. If you got some of them big live oil tanks, one of them big fridges, a bait shop or whatnot. Otherwise not, this has got like the old stay bill. Well, you'll just kind of put it in there. Half ounce, one fourth. I probably we only need to go. One fourth, probably. What, what did they say? One, what? They said one ounce is eight. Was it? Or 30 gallons? that real quick see what that said i think that's what it says 30 gallons half ounce trees 30 gallons of water yeah so i only need like a little drop then so what i'll do give it a little squeeze fill that up to about well there's one fourth line i'll go i'll go about the one fourth just to try i want to i want to i want to get these fish drunk on some of this stuff and then what we'll do right here is pop the cap it does come sealed cool i'll just Pop that a little bit. Now we're going to pour this in here and see what it does. That's pretty cool. Look like toilet bowl water. Oh wow. Then I'll kind of give it a little. Okay, okay. Right off the bat, right off the bat, as soon as I put this in there, I noticed the minnows that were kind of swimming around everywhere, as soon as I put this in there, they went to the side of the water that is holding more of this before I even stirred it up. They all kind of went to that, then they started getting a little bit more um, wiggly wobbly, actually, so that, that's pretty cool. I'm kind of, we'll see how this does, you know, you know, bait fish can die over time. This is supposed to help with them. Also, when you got a live well like that, you may want to put a little bit of ice on it, drop that temperature down on hotter days like this. 
I will be adding a little bit of ice to keep that water temperature down. Tell you what, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know I surely did, and I hope you learned something off this. Maybe you're gonna go out and get your seine net and do some of the traditional old way. Maybe you're not. Maybe like you know what? I'm not that you know that fat guy, that redneck, dirty guy that's just gonna get out here in these dirty Wabash rivers or the dirty rivers where you're at. Sometimes it's not about staying clean. It's always about making memories, enjoying what you do where you do it at on your bodies of water. You know. Big boy back there fishing. Yeah, I heard you swimming. Yeah, definitely. But I'm the type of guy that'll get out here barefoot dirty. Doesn't matter to me, man. I want y'all to live to fish, fish to live, and enjoy the fishing where you're at. But before I go, y'all, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Show you exactly how we're doing this. So here we go, right here. There's the water. There's the minnows. Got a big air stone down in there. It's working pretty good. It's working definitely good. Right there it is. Definitely. Keeping it alive. The Magellan Insulated Bait Dry Box. It's working. Y'all live the fish, fish live. I'll see you guys somewhere in the great outdoors.